when I create stuff uh, like designs or whatever, I usually try to make things pixel perfect and really well crafted. But then when that's that process of handing it over to a developer, it feels a lot of things are lost. Um, and it makes me wonder if the tools that we're using, be it like any of the graphics applications, don't feel like they're fit for designing for the web. Um, and like designing in browser doesn't make sense to me. So I mean, I suppose the leading question I'm going to ask is, do you think our tools are fit for purpose? Well, apart from the fact that I don't really know all the tools <laughs> that designers have because I'm really not good at designing, so I don't even try anymore. Maybe I should. Um, I think that is one of the big issues that are definitely there. So I've been working with some de designers in the past, and as far as I know, most of them work in Photoshop, InDesign, which are couldn't be further away from the web, really. Yeah. So it's like, OK, so classical page layout, these tools are great for because you have a static visual that you're trying to create. Well, on the web, you don't even know what size your canvas is going to be, and you have to adapt accordingly. And that just doesn't work. And I know that tools like Sketch have gotten more popular because they have a little bit more of a modular approach to design, where you have like things you can move around as a compound and not have individual lines and layers, necessarily. Um, but even then, it's still you end up with a visual, a fixed visual, nothing that conveys animation, like how a side nav comes into the frame when you click it, or how the side is supposed to adapt when the screen size changes. Yeah. So designers have, I think, adapted to a point where they usually design the same page like three times, phone layout, yeah, tablet layout, and desktop layout. But that still assumes that there's three fixed sizes, and we have loads of different pixel densities, and aspect ratios, and sizes, and distances to the screen where the user sitting, all these things are not very well covered. And I know that, for example, Sketch has a new plugin. Um, that resizing and reflowing. Exactly, where you can basically define anchor points and have a little bit like you can basically resize your design and can define how things are supposed to move around when the screen size changes. So that's a good step in the first direction. But still, most designers, that, at least that I worked with, are more familiar with classic print design, and that doesn't carry over well to the web. I mean, do you find that quite limiting, then, like with the outcome? Because you are potentially receiving these static mock-ups, which have bear no relationship to the thing that you're going to create, like even just typography. Like sometimes you have to, um, like, for performance reasons, you may have to like you know go with uh, default font uh, typefaces, like or like the system fonts. Um, so almost it seems like that process is like there to uh, stroke the ego of the designer rather than the thing that you're actually creating. It's it is not necessarily limiting because in the end I have to make the product work. So I always think that I have. I can strong arm my decisions. <laughs> I can be like, what you want is not possible. I'll just do it the other way around. But of course, I usually think the designs that I get are really good. So I want to make them, I want to make something that's as close as possible. So I think in that case, um, it is not really limiting, but it's more exhausting because you have to have much more feedback loops with the designer into can't do this, what else do you think could work? I can't place the underline in exactly that position because I don't have control over that. All these little bits and pieces of designs have a lot of um, care deeply about making something pixel perfect. And if you don't implement that way, they get angry at you. And then you have to like, you know, try to try to make it right again. So um, that's why I never changed designers that often back when I was a freelancer. I, was like, I had two <laughs> designers because I knew they had a rough understanding of the web, what is possible and what is not. So the designs would most of the time be fairly reasonable to do. And I would just have to be like, OK, I have to make a compromise here in the size, because sometimes the page could be too small, or these things. Um, but it's a lot of extra work, right? And yeah. that is something that, especially at the start, as a freelance web designer, is money that you don't earn. Yeah, cool. So um, I think the other way to approach this is if, if designers would get a little bit more familiar with the capabilities of the current web, what is coming, what can CSS do, what can it do. Um, so what do you think about Dash Elements? Um, and what is Dash Elements for designers who have no idea what Dash Elements is? Well, in terms of design, it's actually a pretty interesting question because there barely is any design at that point. Dash Elements is a project that I've started with Rob Dodson and Monica Dinkolescu uh, in December, basically, um, where we're trying to take common UI pattern elements like an accordion, a side nav, a radio button group, and re-implement them in custom elements, but make sure they are high performance very flexible and accessible, which is something that often falls short in UI libraries. That yeah. They don't work well with screen readers or just 
don't have keyboard input at all. And or if you take them, you can't style them as freely. So in this case, they're really raw implementations with almost no design attached to them. And the, I guess the, the new thing about it is that you're not supposed to necessarily use those, but to read the code. So we have taken the majority of the time to make sure the code is super clear, super clean, very well commented. We actually produce the code into, or turn the code into a website where you have code and comments side by side. So you know basically for every line why it's there and what it's doing. Um, and I'm thinking it's going to be really interesting for the ecosystem that they will have a chance to see how you can do something that's highly flexible, visually very flexible. Designers can basically say, I want my radio box to look like this and still have all the... The, the benefits of accessibility, whatever. Yeah, all the marks of performance, accessibility, all these things. I mean, that's really uh, amazing because, I mean, from a design point of view, we will never really talk about accessibility. And I think when it comes to um, like the tools that we, we use to create these things are very boxed in and it's like, doesn't take into consideration behavior. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, is Dash Elements uh, is part of the intention to educate? It's mostly to educate. Um, it's, so it's, it's a mixture of educating about how do you do accessibility on the web, how do you do custom elements, how do you do high performance, and how can you achieve all three things at the same time without trading off developer convenience or you know, spending eight hours a day just on getting the accessibility right. Like it's, it's possible, it's doable, and it's not too much to ask for a developer to make their stuff accessible. That's probably one of the base messages we want to send with this. Yeah, I mean, do you think, um, so I mean, the tools we use do feel like in theory. I mean, what, what do you think will be the next steps for designers and developers to sort of improve that kind of tooling in order to make uh, production or like the final things much more easier, much more streamlined, I suppose? I feel like, especially right now, the web is at such a fast point, developing so quickly, so many new things. Like the every... golden age of, of the web. Kinda. We've, the renaissance? Like, <laughs> maybe? I don't know, it sounds cheesy. But it's like, it's, it's catching up, so so many new capabilities on the web, and um, Service Worker being one thing. Yep. I mean, we've talked for so, about Service Worker for two years now, almost, and we're still exploring the patterns and best practices around them. So considering all the other new things that there are like web Bluetooth and web USB and I mean finally having web components on all the browsers and all these things, it's gonna take time to have the best patterns and practices and at the end a streamlined process for do using those things is in place. So um, I guess it's too early to call. Too but, early to tell. Yeah, but I, I feel like um, a lot of people do spending a lot of time on figuring out how to do things right, how to do, like, I guess I'm, I'm one of them now. I'm trying to do accessibility and performance at the same time. Yep. So um, it's, we're getting there. So it's really the gold rush and uh, trying to figure out, we're still not there yet, but we, we, we'll get there eventually. I mean, we are not there yet. What, what we can do right now is pretty amazing. And I feel like we have now some apps that are purely on the web that are really, really good and can you know keep up with native and we have achieved it. We are kind of there, but we can also be so much better. I find it really fascinating every time I do a creative project, no matter how or what the, the output or the final product ended up being, I just learn so much in the process and I discover so many new things. Mm -hmm.